All right. Welcome back, Morning Skate family. We got episode 181 for you. I'm your host, BizDev, joined by Ked and Hal. Got a lot to get into this week. Uh, Ked, big Rangers news. You want to start it off? Yeah. Uh, before we kind of get into it, let's just talk about what happened this week. Uh, actually, let me break this down. Tony D'Angelo just got waived. This is our third time trying to record this podcast. So if, if we have to re-record it, we're going to get into a new broadcast studio. I think it's kind of it's the curse of Tony D as of right now. Uh, we have to get into that. Hal got married. Uh, I can't wait to hear about his uh, prenuptials. I think I kind of nailed that. Um, maybe not. Uh, we got to play in a sick outdoor rink. We have a new sponsorship that if you guys use CBD, like you guys are going to get into that. We're going to get into that at some point. Uh, we just had Bud Schneider on. I don't know if you guys ever heard of the 1980 Miracle uh, United States gold medal team. But, yeah, he came on the podcast. That was pretty cool. And uh, – we just we just had a ton to talk about this week, but I, I think maybe before we get into NHL in the news, like how what's it like what's it like to be locked in for your career, man? You just signed a super long term deal with an annual AVV of getting a new car this week. So uh, what's it what's it like, man? Congratulations, by the way. And also, did you like the gift? Yeah, I'll get to your guys' gift later. Uh, it was great. I don't know. It was a good day. I really don't feel like talking about it that much uh that's how time uh but i i I appreciate the kind words we'll get to the boys they did get me a nice gift um so we'll Well, get to that later you 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 did it so good stuff yeah we're proud of you so um yeah i think we i think we started off by introducing our new sponsorship it's something uh cat and i have worked on for for a little bit and we're pretty happy to introduce that the official exclusive cbd sponsor of the morning skate is can i brands if you can use the code tms25 for all types of cbd they've got this men cream that's awesome to put on uh after you skate to kind of relax your muscles they've got can i fresh uh oil they've got can i sleep uh sleep uh capsules and sublingual oils um and then the can i boost uh cbd oil which i take in the morning uh, it's got, I think, 45 milligrams of caffeine in it as well. So it's a nice way to start your day. Um, all in all, though, we're we're really happy with this partnership with Canine Brands. Nick and Colleen have been amazing to us so far. So, Jimmy, uh, Ken, you I got any? I appreciate you breaking down the spread. Here's the thing, guys. I've never done CBD before. I haven't done it. Uh, I, I don't know why I haven't, but just haven't. I know that Dale has for a while. Um here, here's a couple things. They gave us the spray that you put in your mouth before you're supposed to go to sleep. And I'm a sucker for anything like that. Like when I when I get sick, I get NyQuil and I just keep taking the NyQuil until the NyQuil's done. Like I just I love getting a good night's sleep. Stuff works. I'm not playing around. And and on top of that, like when you when you do the NyQuil and like you wake up, I'm always kind of a little groggy. This stuff, you wake up and you're super alert. So I'm pumped about that. Uh Ted did his annual groin pull naturally uh this happens probably two or three times a year so biannual or triannual growing pull um so i've been using that cream the cream i think i mean i'm still in pain but way less pain using that stuff and uh yeah obviously we're really excited about it but i think i'm excited about it most because it's not just like a partnership where we're just going to talk about like oh here's a promo code like the shit actually works and it's kind of cool and i'm bummed out at the fact that like i hadn't used this in the past so i think that you guys are uh I mean, you're going to hear real life type shit instead of just like your the ad read that you get in the Microsoft Doc or whatever. You know what I mean? So I think that would be better. And also, I know I know a lot of promo codes are 20 percent or whatever. Well, 25 percent because t- the morning skate went the extra mile. So it's promo code TMS25 at Can I Brands. Uh, check us out. We're definitely going to be tweeting about it, talking about it. Uh, yeah, and give it a try. So and it's in three quarters of NHL locker room. So most there's a shit ton of cbd companies out there uh gas station cbd like a lot of this is junk and kind of a, the spur of the moment hop on the cbd train it doesn't always work but this stuff's legit it wouldn't wouldn't be in three quarters of the nhl locker rooms if it wasn't so i think you nailed um, it right there like and yeah. and i don't i don't know if this is like a pathetic or embarrassing thing to say but i definitely try to emulate nhl hockey players that's why i just bought an entire like whole new equipment setup of ranger stuff so if you're going to tell me using cb is going to give me one step closer to the show sign me up right on dude yeah that's uh hal you you got uh you got a couple of them mailed to you what do you think so far i like the spray 10 sprays under the tongue slept like a baby 
Um, I feel like this would be a good part for me if we're going to do an ad read. I've just been thinking about this. This is something I've always wanted to do, and I feel like it's not an official ad read if you don't do it. So <clears throat> canibrands.com, that's canibrands.com, C-N-I-B-R-A-N-D-S.com, promo code TMS25, that's Tango Mike Sierra 25, <laughs> uh, get 25% off the cannabis. Oh, man. You One drop in the mic can go in there to get out of boy. Yeah, right. I love the army. I love the army alphabet, and I feel like if you don't spell it out, what's the point? You know? Yeah. No, I, I couldn't agree more, and, and I'm <laughs> glad that you went with the, the official pronunciation. And you mentioned the, the army. Uh, shout out to the military. You know, I'm a big military guy. My favorite reason for this, using that, is I like uh, – there's a couple of them, like – C Charlie D Delta F Foxtrot, like being able to like throw in a Foxtrot when you're talking like on a business call feels fucking awesome. No, no, a hundred percent does. And, and <laughs> while we're thinking about that, uh, we might have Air Force Amy on the podcast, which is like completely <laughs> random, but she might be hopping on. I don't know if she knows anything about hockey, but she's also a huge supporter of the military. So shout out to Air Force. Amy. Is that stole? I I don't want to chirp Air Force Amy, but is that stolen valor? No, I think she was. I think she was a part of the military. Then that makes complete fucking sense. I take it all back, Air Force. I'm sorry. I don't think I don't think you call somebody Air Force Amy if they haven't served. And if that's the case, then then I still love Air Force Amy. But <laughs> oh, excellent. So last thing I want to uh, get into. <laughs> excellent. Thanks for the Air Force Amy talk. Uh, last thing I want to get into real quick before we do uh, touch on NHL in the news was uh, Bell Let's Talk Day. It's an uh, important mental health day in mental health community, the hockey community really rallies behind it. Um, the five cent donations from Bell for all across Canadian mental health programs was excellent. Um, just, I really love to see, it's, it's something that means a lot to me and I just really love that the hockey community cares so much and is starting to talk way more about this. So uh, that's it for me. Do you guys have anything on, on the day? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's all, it is a hockey thing, but I honestly think it's like a Canada thing. I think it's something really cool that Canada does, and they pump it through their most popular sport. You know what I mean? And that's why, yeah. like, I feel like most of the people in the U.S. that I know that know about Bell Let's Talk are still like hockey fans, though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you don't like it hasn't like crossed over yet, but hopefully it gets there. I think it's awesome, and I did want to uh, not to take away from that, but I did just want to I fact check myself. Air Force Amy did serve in the Air Force, so thank you for your service, Amy. I should have never slandered your name. But, yeah, no, dude, great video, Dale, on Bell Let's Talk. Thank Good you. Call. I'm about it. I know the NHL just came out with a TikTok and it had to do with, like, Robin Leonard and, and the mental health thing. And he talked about, like, how the organization, Vegas, has been really supportive and, like, all this stuff. And, like, Pete DeBoer was interviewed and he's like, yeah, and, like, Leonard will come right up to me and tell me he's having a bad day. And it's something that, you know, we get through together as a team. And I thought that was really cool. So, um, shout out to all that. And, I mean, Bell Let's Talk so important. I'm not trying to be negative. I just wish this was like every day of the year. Like, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it sucks. That it's, it's one day, but that one day, dude, they do so much. Like think about how many people tweet that out. It's insane. And all, and all the NHL guys are into it. I always watch the Rick Rippin, uh, five for fighting super. Is it superhero? Is that the name of the song that they have or something like that? Where, I mean, that, that video gets me emotional as shit. Uh, number 38, Rick Rippin. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Dale, I love the video. Um, it's nice that we have somebody on our staff that is comfortable and open enough to share in and like, and then potentially ending that uh, stigma. So thank you. Yeah, dude. Thanks for uh, thanks for acknowledging it. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Five for fighting, like like hockey, and that's why they named their band that. But don't you think Five for Fighting should have been like like a Blink One Eighty Two type of band? Like that's not like when you hear the name of their band. And then, like, one of those songs comes on. I know, Dale, you grew up in a five for fighting home. Um, it just, it's just kind of a weird name for the band, no? Yeah, they um, – Dale, talk about five for fighting. I'm going to look up, like, their top song. Yeah, so uh, you only have 100 years to live, like, kind of my family's – Yeah. I, 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 the live the riddle. I mean, these, yeah. these are songs, but, but you're right. Five for fighting should be, like, the Dropkick Murphys, I think. You just yeah. like you don't like I don't listen to a hundred years and it's like all right let's go fucking crack some skulls. <laughs> yeah. I did see him, I did get a chance to see him live at the Egg though, which was pretty pretty cool. And we they would went be, up yeah, to, it's a classy joint. My yeah. my my dad and mom went up to the, the guy and was like, Hey, your your song changed our life, essentially. So big inspiration for us to uh 
you know, take the RV and travel. If you really care about my family dynamics and <laughs> child childhood soundtrack, but there What's we go. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, NHL in the news. <laughs> All right, boys are ripping today, so we're we're feeling good. Uh, a lot of good chemistry to start this podcast. Jimmy, Tony D, on waivers now. What do you got? Yeah, I something had to have happened. Uh, he was tied fourth in the league last year for defenseman and scoring, and you just don't release a player for that. And he's been in the news with his podcast, with his Trump support, with uh, I think he like challenged the fan to a fight outside the rink, whatever. Um, and it's it's one of those things where it's like you know Tony like freedom of speech for sure whatever but you're a professional athlete you're under the limelight you're doing this and you know that there's going to be backlash for this and I'm not saying this is why they wait but I'm sure that that played a significant part within it it's you're not a side trail, right like we had Bud Snyder on and you guys can listen to that on on whenever we release that pod but he talks about like being a team and no one guy's above another guy. And I'm not saying Tony doing that is, is is Tony starting this podcast is doing that, but it is because it's creating a ton of different stories in it within the news and and it's just something where it's like, you know, if if you're truly one team, one dream kind of thing, like I think you realize that and you kind of see that it's the focus is more on you and you kind of step back and you don't do that anymore. Um there's been some rumors going around that there was like a scuffle after the game. I don't know. I, all I can know and tell you is the Rangers clearly are fed up with him. Um, right-handed puck moving defenseman, he, he can play the power play. He's a really, really, really good hockey player, and that's why I was, I would get annoyed at people going at him all the time because like he's the, he's there to help your hockey team win games. Um, Dan Rosen just tweeted this out. David Quinn did not get specifics of the Rangers' decision. He said in 24 hours they will likely have more information that can be revealed. But as of right now, it was a decision the organization made. And we'll see how the waiver situation plays out. Quinn said Anthony Potato will be in the lineup. Brendan Smith remains in. Uh, I think he gets into it. This isn't about one incident. It's not about one thing. This is a situation that the organization felt was best at this current time. We'll see how the situation plans out. So He said nothing. Yeah, but I did like the fact that he said in 24 hours, hopefully we'll get a little bit more news. But again, man, like, and I see people saying the Rangers have been trying to trade Tony for forever and no team wanted him. These people don't work for the organization. So as far as I'm concerned, they don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about. I think it's easy to kind of say that and not really know it to get those retweets and those favorites up. But I, I, I just, I don't get it, man. Like something had to have happened because if I think as a hockey team, like you could trade Tony D'Angelo and get somebody back for him. It might not be a fucking first round pick and an elite prospect, but I feel like you could at least get a fucking fifth round pick for the guy. And the fact that they waived him makes me think that they just, they didn't want anything to do with it. So um, it's sad. It sucks. I, I like Tony because obviously he's, he's, he's an offensive weapon on, on the blue line, but I like the fact that like after the whistle, he'll, he'll put his fucking, his, uh, fist in your face like he plays that tough hard nosed game he ha- didn't have the best start to the season it, I couldn't be more disappointed about a player like I really enjoyed him playing defense for the Rangers but I think they got to a point where enough was enough that that would be my uh, biggest takeaway from that and I'll admit it dude Ray Pork was the real number 77. <laughs> uh, that was hard for me. How? What do you have on this? Do you agree, disagree? Like, I know, like, you love making fun of me because I, I once said that Tony D'Angelo is a real 77. But, uh, feeling vindicated. Definitely feeling vindicated on that front. Uh, no, I don't know, man. You're the Rangers fan. I thought, I thought you put your thoughts out there pretty well. My question for you is, like, <laughs> all right, say hypothetically that those rumors are true that no team wanted to take him on. Is Tony D going to ride the bus in the AHL? Or, like, I just, I think, do you think Tony D would sign in the KHL? Do you think Tony D would live in Russia? I think it's either the KHL or, like, first, I know he, he like, has, like, a boxing background. I can see him, like, trying to do, like, UFC or, like, boxing. Or, like, I doubt he would go to the AHL. Yeah, and I don't see him going to the KHL either, but who else is going to pay him money? What's he going to, like... I don't know. I just, for, I, 
it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him. Like, do you think your gut instinct, do you think Tony D's in like the NHL again? I don't, dude, I don't know. It's insane to me. I guess we'll find out if somebody picks him up on waivers. It, it's just, yeah. I'm like blown away. I, I wasn't expecting this. The Rangers fucking blew another stinker. They get a period going into the third. They get, they have a lead going into the third period and they blow it pretty much every time. And they lost to the Penguins and they, I don't think they played the best game in the world. And obviously there's frustration there. The Rangers, they've only won two fucking games this year. So, but I, I just, I know there was a rumor that there's a bigger player in him got in a fight. Like if Chris Kreider or Jacob Truba like fought Tony D'Angelo afterward, I don't, dude, I have no idea. I, no I also idea. think from a GM's perspective, like Tony D has so, so many, like he's a sideshow and there's all those distractions and, and like, you don't really want to bring that on and you know, half of your fan base is going to hate him um, going in there. So I think as a GM, it probably looks worse to trade for the guy. Whereas if you pick him up on waivers, you can basically be like, we didn't give up any assets. We'll give him a chance. If it he doesn't work out, we don't lose anything. He needs to go play in a small market if he does play in the NHL. You can't but, be you can't be a New York Ranger like doing these things. Yeah, no, and I think and the other thing too is like if time shows anything, it's that people forget about stuff like Mike Babcock got canceled last season and he's on NBC. Like maybe he just needs to hide for a year. I don't think he plays in the AHL either, but like I just don't know what he does. I don't have, dude, I don't have a clue, and I'm not saying he's anywhere remotely near these athletes, but if you look at the most successful athletes that have come out of New York, it's like Derek Jeter. Uh, Henrik Lundqvist, Eli Manning. Like, did any of those guys have a podcast? Did any of those guys come out and openly support uh, a pre- – like, I, I get that you can openly support a president. Like, Tom Brady, I'm pretty sure, supported Donald Trump. But Tom Brady didn't start a podcast and tweet out to people just to poke the bear. And, like, like he did things on purpose to get a rise out of people. And, like, bro, you're a professional hockey player, man. Like, Did you I- think that burner was his? No. There's no way, dude. It was too. It was too fucking. It was too true. I think it was actually somebody who hated Tony D'Angelo and just made a burner just so like people would think it was him. Just catfished a burner. I think so. And if it was him, like, dude, what, dude, what if that's the case? What if the Rangers found out that that burner was Tony D'Angelo and they're like, dude, get the fuck out of here? <laughs> yeah, dude. Once you get into burner territory, like, I don't think we've had. Have we ever had a burner case in the NHL? I think there might have been like a GM or somebody, but usually that's the NBA. I would love. I would love to discuss a burner Twitter account NHL story if it actually happened. Yeah, we could use a burner gate. This league, we need that. Yeah, I think that would be good for the game. We're in the game. More burner accounts. What's next, Dale? Yeah. We got uh, Kuznetsov, Orlov, Sansonov uh, sitting out on COVID protocols, but the Capitals have taken nine out of ten available points without Ovechkin. Uh, so caps are caps are rolling. Yeah, and they didn't have Oshie or Wilson there for a couple games either. We, had, I don't think we played the Capitals yet this year. I don't know. I don't think we played the Cap. I know the Bruins just did. Uh, we have a new Bruins writer, by the way. Posted his first blog last night. I thought it's really good. I like the way he he writes like kind of a recap of the game, and then he gives you like his top three things and his bottom three things. And I was like, if I was a Bruins fan, I'd be pumped about reading shit like that. So, I, and I, I had Hal look over the stuff because he's a Bruins guy and Hal gave me the green light. So I'm happy that uh, that guy's writing for us. But how do the Bruins look against the Capitals? Are they just – how are the Capitals winning all these games? I don't know, dude. And I like – I'm just going to preface this by saying, like, I always have, like, a lot of hate for my heart and one team uh, every single season. And I think it's going to be the Capitals this year. Like, they're in our division. Like, the Bruins always lose to the Capitals already. Uh Tom Wilson's annoying to play against. I did think the Chara thing was cool, and Chara scored their first goal, and they went absolutely berserk on the bench. That was awesome. Um, that was a cool moment. But Disco, uh, our Capitals writer, is going to be my mortal enemy in this group chat. I like I I the Bruins outshot the Capitals last night, forty three to twenty three. Uh, they were down three zero. It was Tuca's been unbelievable this year. It was his worst game of the year. It's bound to happen in the regular season. Loss on a, a rocket from Ovechkin in overtime. And, like, I'm down on my luck. Like, I'm pretty sad. Yeah, Bruins before, came back from 3-0. Just really quick before you get into that, I'm glad you brought that up because it was supposed to be in the intro. Ovechkin, Crosby, and McDavid all scored overtime winners last night. Right. And if that's not good for the league, I don't know what it is. But keep going. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Bruins tie up with 30 seconds left, losing overtime. And then I check the the morning skate group chat, and Disco's going off about best start in franchise history. Caps are rolling. 
And that just made me, it made me so mad. It's not Disco's fault, but I've always had this preconceived notion. Like I remember I went to this Bruins Capitals game back in like 2007 with my dad, got like the box seats, like the sweet seats upgrade sitting next to this rich couple. And I knew the guy only knew Ovechkin on the Capitals. And he just had this girl knew nothing about hockey. And he was just like talking so much shit about the Bruins. And all he knew was that Ovechkin was the greatest hockey player ever. And in that moment, I just hated the Capitals. And of course, Alex Salmon scored a, a slap shot from the red line on Tim Thomas in overtime to win that game too. So I've had hatred for the Capitals forever. I don't know, man. They don't look that great to me. Like there's a few issues with the Capitals. Their forwards roll. Nick Backstrom is still unbelievable. Ovechkin still has it, right? Tom Wilson scores goals at unreal pace. TJ Oshie, you go down the list, Verona. They're sick. I love their forwards. Their D is what I'm skeptical of. And I was skeptical of it when they won the cup though. So maybe I should take a step back, but like Char is playing over 20 minutes a night. Like, is that sustainable to be the best team in the East? That's a question mark to me. I know. I think they're missing Orlov right now. Um, I don't know. I just think their D is kind of mediocre. They have this rookie goalie, Vitek Vanek uh, from the Czech who's outplayed Samsonov who got suspended anyway. Um, he looked great last night. So maybe, Maybe that has something to do with it. Um, I don't know, Ked. What do you think? Like, do you think the Caps are the runway favorite for the division? No, nah, the Bruins are just because they're the Bruins. Um, I, it's a it's a weird dynamic, man. I mean, the Capitals could go on a run, dude. When you have Alex Ovechkin, who's like putting up fifty goals a year, like pretty easily, and like Nicholas Backstrom, who is Nicholas Backstrom one of the most underrated players who's ever played the game of the of hockey? Because yeah, hundred percent. I put up is insane i don't know if it was reddit twitter somewhere i was reading there was a big discussion and it was basically someone tweeted or something uh is nicholas backstrom a hall of famer and like i thought it was a no-brainer yeah right like uh, he's like a point per game player he has a stanley cup rookie of the year like he's a hall of famer he's definitely you're right i think for a while patrice bergeron kind of got that title and then it was like so overplayed and then it goes on to another player who's really good you know what I mean? Like the most underrated player is never the guy that people call the most underrated, like because yeah. then it wouldn't be real. So, yeah, a hundred percent. And I think the Geico commercial ultimately kind of that's the one like downfall on his whole career. Like, yeah, yes, but you, yeah, but you need a Geico commercial if you're going to the Hall of Fame. I guess, but can you shoot ten pucks in ten seconds, bro? Dude, I can shoot like a hundred pucks in ten seconds. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, man. I think. Did you guys see that Nasher tried breaking the world record for amount of pucks on a hockey stick? Yeah, he copied. He must have heard our podcast. You Remember we were talking about? Him? Yeah, I think he. I think he was tuned into the podcast and was like, "I got to do it before Ked does." Maybe. Did he do <sighs> it? No. 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 All right. Like, so the window's still made open. It look like twenty six pucks on a hockey stick is like really hard to do, in terms of like holding it. Probably so is. I think, well, I, th I think what we got wrong last podcast is your hands have to be together on the stick. So mix we'll, in some ugly wrist curls, bro. Oh, bro, yeah, you're. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to do that. <laughs> Get well, your wrist going, man. Real quick, Nick Backstrom, nine hundred and forty points over nine hundred sixty-five NHL games for a total of two hundred forty-eight goals and six hundred ninety-two assists. So he's, he's gonna. That. That's yeah. playing in an era where guys don't put up 140 points. Like, do you remember when we were younger? Like, players would put up right. fucking a shit ton of points. Like, he's a point per game player in in an era where like a point per game is cash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a thousand, yeah. He's gonna have a thousand points, a thousand games in a Stanley Cup. Like, yeah, yeah. His 0-9 um, 2010 season was his best for uh, 101 points. Uh, but. Moving on, I got a video. I can pull it up. Uh, Jake Muzzin flips the puck at Matthew Kachuk. Let's see if I can uh, quickly share my screen here for the viewers. Do you think he can do it? Oh. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little choppy, but you know. yeah, this is bougie as fuck. I. All right. Yeah. So I, I feel like if you, if you haven't heard this, look it up. It's like all over Twitter. Uh, Muzzin flips the puck right at Matt Kachuk on the ice, and Kachuk just goes fucking nuts, dude. I don't know, I don't know what your take is on it, but like, I love the fire and I like the Kachuks. I've done a one eighty on them, but chill out, man. I don't know, man. I I lose my shit over the dumbest stuff, and this would definitely be one of them. To me, though, like getting a puck flipped at you, it like a fair retaliation is like a hard cross check. 
You know what yeah. I mean? Go over or like punch him in the like. I, he was like punching the wall and shit. Like he yeah. was like freaking out. Well, like, they had just lost too, and you don't really know if there was a battle between those two going on during the game. <laughs> but I feel like flipping a puck at somebody when they're on the ice is like the equivalent of getting like bitch slapped. Is it worse than stealing someone's stick? Um, no. Oh, well, that video though of that goalie yeah. stealing that kid's stick and snapping it over. Uh, over like the bar or whatever was that uh was that beer league or was that do you know what that was yeah it was beer league if that's beer league that's fucked because i would hate to have to buy a new stick because the goal is i think think you can kill that guy yeah i think the player in that situation like i thought the player in that situation's reaction fit more than kachuk's reaction to uh, to getting a puck flipped at him that was my point and that's like clearly i don't mean you can actually kill that guy but like i feel like there's some sort of repercussion about that. I'm if not- you snap a guy's stick on purpose in beer league, then like to Here's me, I, that's like one of the only situations ever that I would consider punching someone in the face in beer league at this point in my life. Like there yeah. might be one or two tops. There was also the, them. yeah. So there's that video, but then there was also another beer league video where the guy literally stole someone else's stick, went over to the bench and then the guy came flying into the bench for the, for the bench brawl. Yeah. I don't think I would fucking jump over the boards like that either. If that was beer league as well, um, I would ask for my stick back. And then if they didn't give me my stick back, that's probably when a conf- confrontation would happen. I don't like. I'll just fucking that. grab it from them, dude. Spear them if you when you get it. I don't know if I would have gone hundred miles an hour at the bench, but I definitely would have went over to the bench and I would have been like, give me my stick back. And if they said no, then I would have pulled him over the ice and beat the wheels off. Him. Yeah, but like that guy just went Luis Mendoza. Yeah, I mean, I, I respect it, though. Like, nobody saw that coming. Like, how often, how often do you see somebody skate as fast as they can and jump over the boards and tackle somebody on the bench? Can you imagine if you were on the bench and that happened to the guy next to you? He launched himself into the bench. It's yeah, insane. and they were all wearing number 69. So, like, I'm assuming that that team was just filled with a bunch of just degenerates. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Dude, I don't know. Do you think there was a full moon like with Beer League or something like that? Because it seems like there's a lot of those instances. And then I'll read this. A guy on my Beer League, we got this email for our game tonight. Uh, best of luck the rest of the season, fellas. Unfortunately, due to an incident in the other division and my wonderful rapport with the commissioner, I am suspended for the last few games. See you next season. So it just seems like guys are dropping like flies. No, like. What is this? Like, is January, late January, when the heat turns up on the winter beer league season? I guess so. Bro, I don't, I wonder what happened. You're going to have to figure out what, how the guy got suspended. Yeah, maybe, I, maybe it's kind of like something outrageous to get suspended in the beer league. Like, I've been in beer leagues where, like, there's been full on fights where, like, people have thrown things at ref. I mean, I mean, dude, we used to, we had like back to back weeks where, and unfortunately it was Patty B refing, uh, where he would make a call and we would just keep playing. And and we want to get suspended from that. So I can't imagine what you have to do to get suspended from a beer. Yeah, and that that would be like a four game suspension and then playoffs. So I mean that they like Rafi Torres them. Yeah, I kind of kind of crazy. Dale, what are you doing? I'm texting my beer league team because uh, Jimmy Murray's playing tonight. Oh boy. You just yeah, you just kind of made me think of that. I'm sorry. All right, um, that's what we had on that one. What's our next story? That was the flip. Oh, yeah, flip the puck. Don't fl- – I think you can – yeah, whatever. Okay, this is going to be really quick. The St. Louis Blues uh, scored three goals to be in a game in 126 seconds. Here's just the list of the other teams. The Capitals did it in 81 seconds. Red Wings 108, Bruins 119, Red Wings 122, Blues 126. Can you imagine being – what's 126? It's 60 – two minutes and six seconds into a game and you're down 3 nothing already. No, I can't, dude. I mean, I it's sick. I wish I, I wish I knew more about this. I didn't even look at this fucking graphic when we were getting ready for it. But uh, I mean, shout out to Dale. Dale is there, the miracle in Whitesboro, nineteen ninety seven, two goals, twenty three seconds. Maybe the greatest might be game of all time. <laughs> wow, dude, that was. <laughs> yeah, people don't forget. I don't know, man. Th- did you have anything on this, Ked? I mean. Here's my question. So 126 seconds, that's like two minutes. I wonder how many line changes there are. Because if you score two goals and then you get yanked, it's like, fuck, bro. Yeah, I want a third. I don't know. I have no idea. I Just just a quick stat to pull up is what I was feeling now. <laughs> we we do right. have some uh, trade demands, though. Yeah, so uh, Victor Met has requ- officially requested a Mette. trade. Mette has requested a trade from the Montreal Canadiens. 
Um, yeah, he's been scratching all seven games this season. So what do you guys got on that while I pull up uh, Victor's stats here? Uh, I mean, we had that, and we also had Sam Bennett requested a trade from the Flames. Uh, maybe it is just a full moon in hockey right now. Tony D'Angelo got waived. These two want to get traded. Beer leaguers are breaking sticks and jumping over boards. I feel like there's a lot of werewolf shit going on right now. Yeah, so fucking – and I looked this up. So Sam Bennett and Victor Mete have the same agent, Darren Ferris. Uh, shout out this guy. I feel like this guy basically just saw the Dubois Lane shit going down. He's like, well, it seems like it's kind of hot in the streets. Maybe we can do a one-for-one, one, get my guy some new some new looks. I don't hate the move by the agent, but just like – do you know what I mean? If you if you have one of these, these guys' players on your team that he represents, you're probably like, oh, fuck. Like, when's Darren Ferris going to give me a call demanding a trade? Like, I – Victor Mete to me is actually an interesting player. I know he played World Juniors. He's quick. He's just like a he's like a five ten, five nine quick defenseman. Hasn't really produced at the NHL yet. But if I'm the Rangers and I'm actually wiping my hands clean of Tony D, Victor Mete uh, might be an interesting kind of cheap buy. Twenty two years old. Again, it's probably better than having Jack Johnson on your third pair. Put him with like Schmidt, someone who can stay at home, see what he can do, um, and it makes sense too. Like Claude Julian, five foot nine defenseman, usually two things that don't go together. Um, do you have anything on Mete, Ked? Uh, not really. I, I know the Canadians are really rolling this year, so it's hard to demand a trade from a team that's playing so well. It's like, I, I don't know. They're not well, a great luck, but if you're not playing, I understand why you want to get out of there. But as a Rangers fan, are you interested in trying to like bring in new young defensemen who have NHL experience? Like, would that be something that if the Rangers gave away minimal assets and you got Mete, would you be interested? I mean, yeah. I mean, well, it's weird because we also have, like, Libor Hayek. Uh, I think Victor Mete would be a, a strong um, – like, he'd be better than Anthony Potato, I would think. So, uh, that would be a plus. I, I don't know. It's weird. I would be more interested in Sam Benner. I li- yeah. I mean, I like how uh... – I like how the the bar is to be better than Potato, so that's good to hear. Yeah, Sam Bennett's interesting, dude. He had a sick mustache in the playoffs. I feel like he was like such a high pick though, and then he kind of had like a bottom six role. I don't know. It seems like there's always issues with Sam Bennett, and he's always on a cold streak. Um, I don't have that much interest in him. I mean, that's another guy. That's someone that would interest you if you're so. If you're a fan base, you're happy your team gets Sam Bennett. I'm assume his value can't be that high. Uh. I just got to double check. Sam Bennett's a center, correct? Was, but I think he's been playing left wing. Um, I don't know, man. Young kid. I, he had a ton of potential. I think he put up a couple decent years in Calgary. I, I, that would be somebody I'd be looking at. Um, I know – I think I'm just like a Brett Howden fan just because everybody hates him, but he's just really not a good hockey player. So any sort of upgrade over him I'd be interested in. So just like quickly looking at his stats, this year 1.7 games. Looks like he's playing on the third line. Um. Which, I mean, third line's okay time. He's playing with Backlund and Josh Levio. I don't know about that third line. But last year in the playoffs, eight points, ten games. Like, it seems like he kind of pulled himself together in the bubble last year. So, I guess there's a lot of upside. I don't know. I just feel like maybe you get you give away too much for, like, what Sam Bennett is. Like, I feel like he probably is a third-line center. And if he thinks he's more than that, then maybe you just have the same problem where if you trade him. Yeah, I don't know. I would – I would like him to the Rangers depending on what we could give up for him because I think that we do need a little bit of help there. Well, if there's one thing I know, everyone's linked to the Rangers, dude, so it is get true. those Eklund rumors going. Jack Eichel and Charlie McAvoy to the Rangers by 2025. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, the Toronto jerseys. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, they played the, the Oilers last night, and I guess you just could not see what color the numbers were, and, and the announcers were having all sorts of troubles figuring that out. Uh, Chris Cuthbert deserves the first star of that game for being able to determine which Leafs player was carrying the puck. So, I mean, I, I'm sure – like, do you think when they were designing these jerseys, that was one of the things that they thought about? Like, oh, hey, I, hopefully the announcers can see it, or do you think that they were just going strictly style points? I don't – well, that's the thing is, like, they're not really that stylish, right? Like, to me, the Maple Leafs not being just blue and white is like the Yankees not having pinstripes. Like, you know, like you don't you don't do that. So I mean, if the announcers can't think they suck too, that's just another point against these jerseys. And hopefully, they fucking rethink their process. Yeah. No, I. It's just I don't understand. I think their jerseys are, are the the numbers on their jerseys are like gray. Like, how do you not just make them white? Oh, the yeah. blue. It's a little gray outline, but it's a blue number on a blue jersey. Okay. Speaking but it's the of same the, blue. 
Speaking of announcers, I just want to show, shout out local broadcast, like your local team, like the MSG guys, the Nessing guys, Altitude, whatever you have. Those guys, I it must be fucking hard to call a game from like the studio home because you can't go to the road rink. Like being in the rink and seeing it and calling it, watching it compared to watching it on a TV, two completely different things. Like, kind of sucks. Great point. You know, I thought about that, dude, but for some reason, I think I would be able to call a game watching it from a TV screen way better than I could standing or sitting all the way up top. Yeah, I guess maybe my biggest complaint of it is like they can't see the shit. You know how sometimes they'll be like, oh, and like Marshan's jawing at somebody and they oh, can't, no, like, it's not on the camera. MSG never does that anyway, so that's not an issue for us. But like an actual, or like yeah, I could, I would be mad about that. Yeah, because like they can't see the shit, so it's just like a different feel. I don't know. It just looks harder to me personally. Uh, but yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it is easier because like that you have the cuts and all that shit. It zoomed in a little bit more, and there's like, there's that delay too. I don't know. So just yeah. something to think about. Uh, What's Next, we got uh, Jim Rutherford, Hockey Hall of Famer, Pittsburgh Penguins GM. Uh, he's resigning abruptly on Wednesday, stating personal reasons. He's 71 years old um, and was under contract throughout the this season and next season. Uh, so Jim Rutherford, what do you guys got on that? I mean, he won a couple Stanley Cup titles. I, I don't think he had the hardest job trying to put together a team around Sidney Crosby and Danny Malkin, but – uh, a couple cups for the guy. Good for him. Hockey Hall of Famer. I brought this story up, obviously, because we're a hockey podcast and we should talk about a story <laughs> like that. But the thing that got me going was Chris Johnson of Headlines says, Scott Melendy and John Kirsten Jr. are two candidates that jump out of him if the Penguins want to fill their GM vacancy in a short time frame. I'd love to see Scott Melendy at the helm of a fucking NHL organization. That, that, I, would, I would compete for a guy like that. So. Hopefully Melanie gets the shot. I think he's the assistant GM up in Montreal right now. I know he was under consideration for when Florida was doing it, but Florida did Florida thing. So, um, but yeah, again, it, it's not. I'm not taking anything away from the guy, but when you have Crosby, Malkin, Latang, and Mark Andre Fleury, and none of those guys were were like free agents, like those you drafted every one of those guys. I'm sure like some things were hard, but. Like it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty okay having those guys on your team. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. But the only counterpoint to that is, I'm sure Edmonton Oilers fans don't think yeah. it's that fucking easy. They ha they've had it tough. And like the one thing to me that always impressed me with Pittsburgh is like the fucking Brian Russ, the Dom Nick Simones. True. Like Ben Cole was like a fifth round pick. They just get these little weasels that come from nowhere. Honestly, and Jake Gensel. yeah. Like, yeah. like you know, like the Oilers don't get like guys that go from come from nowhere and put up fifty points next to McDavid and Drysaddle. Like that doesn't happen. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, it just seems so weird to me that they haven't figured out that formula. But yeah, I don't know. Melonby would be cool. Yeah, um, other than Latang too. Like, is there a, is there a Pittsburgh Penguin defenseman that's really struck like stuck out to you throughout the years that you're like, oh yeah, that guy's a Pittsburgh Penguin? Because other than Latang. Like Doom Doomlin, I think is on the pens. Like yeah, to me, I always even though like he finished with the Capitals, Brooks Orpik was always like the Penguins yeah. defense to me. Like the, he was their stay at home guy, and he wasn't that great. Gonchar when he was there was older, but like a power play specialist. Yeah, but it's always been Latang's been their one, which is crazy that they had that much success with Chris Latang like as the one, especially ten years ago. But yeah, no, you're right on that. They do it like by committee with D. Very strange. Um, Oh, really quick, though. I was looking it up just because I was curious. We were going to talk about the Penguins. Uh, Connor Jari's been trashed this year. Their backup to Smith has been trashed. But if you look at Matt Murray's also trashed. Like, all their save percentages are around 850. So, it's like everyone acted like the Penguins had all these great goalies, but maybe they had none. Yeah, I I, I think Marc-Andre Fleury was their guy. When I think of a Pittsburgh could still be there. He would – when you think of a Pittsburgh Penguin goal, I think of two guys. I think of Mark Andre Fleury and then Tom Barrasso. Do you remember that guy? Yeah, I remember Tom Bar Barrasso. Uh, yeah, I don't really think of any other Pittsburgh goalie. Shit, that's a good point. But you also have to think about like, I mean, Mark Andre Fleury put those fucking yellow piss yellow pads on like 18 years ago. Now, like, that's it's pretty crazy. much been most of our life. It's crazy that it's been that long. Yeah, I'm, I'm Ryan I'm, or Hal. I'm pretty sure we saw him play on Binghamton at a game in youth hockey. Probably when he was in Wilkes-Barre. Yeah, that would make sense because I think he did go to Wilkes-Barre, and then 
he went to the Penguins. I I feel like I did see him. I also just really remember watching. I might have been his first his first NHL start was when he was like eighteen or nineteen in like those pads, and I was just like, "What the fuck is this kid? Who's the flower? He's the flower, dude." What's Eli, that? Yeah. Well, I used to hate flower, but he's really grown on me through the years. Dude. Nice. All, right, uh, all right. So uh, up next, Matt Dumba, probably among the uh, the my short list of people I wouldn't want to be hit in the face by a slap shot. So we got Sean Walker. I'm pulling the picture up now. Just taking a shot to the face by uh, Matt Dumba. This is this is bad. What do you what do you guys got? That's hockey. You look at that, that's, and it's weird. Hockey, but, yeah. like, like that's dude, that's a hockey player. It's fucking nuts. Like he'll be back probably in like two weeks. It's it's insane the fact that the shit that these guys do. And to be completely honest with you, I'm surprised this doesn't happen way way more often with people going down to block shots. Like this happens. How many times a year do you think something like this happens? Maybe once. Maybe. Yeah, this is yeah. This one's pretty bad. And, and and with everybody going down to block shots, like dude, back when Jed Ortmeyer would try to block a shot, he would literally square up with you and just put one knee down and just here it is, have at it. Like I, I can't believe shit like this doesn't happen more. But uh glad that he's okay. It's gonna definitely take a little while for him to get back to what he used to look like, but uh a hockey player, man. Yeah. yeah, I that's kind of like that photo right there was kind of like why I wear a cage during beer league because, like, you never know when you got a kid who put up 17 points in the IJHL as a 20 year old, uh, on the other team's blue line who's just looking to go high and hard at your face. So that's why I wear protection. I mean, kid, you're reckless, bro. Yeah, that could be you, kid. Could be. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on, some big news. The NWHL bubble is going on right now up in Lake Placid. Um, Ken and I were potentially going to go up and cover a little bit of it. Unfortunately, didn't get the opportunity. So the NHL marked a, a big deal with Discover. Um, so it's the biggest sponsorship in their league history. They also had some uh, some pretty big week with a little tiff with Barstool. Uh, Jimmy, I don't know if you want to take the lead with this guy. Would love to. Um, they just don't get it, I don't think. Uh, Eric Nardini, the COO, COO, right? Uh, she runs Barstool. Um, has been a huge women's hockey supporter since I've ever heard of her. Like, that's been her thing. I know they did the Pond Hockey Classic and stuff, and, like, she's out there, and she loves, like, talking about hockey, and, like, that's her thing. And she wants to grow the game of women's hockey. And WHL doesn't want Barstool involved because of things that Barstool has said and done in the past, yada, yada, yada. He- here's the thing. The NWHL has not worked because there hasn't been exposure to anybody other than the Olympics. Every How many years? Every four years you get an Olympics. Is that right? Every yeah. four years you get to watch women play hockey on, on TV. And it sucks, dude, because that USA-Canada game, I've said it a hundred times on this podcast, one of my favorite games I've, I've watched in a really long time. You don't get that because the NWHL, they don't have sponsors. They, they don't have people that can get them on TV. They don't do all this. Eric Nardini can do this like a hundred percent. And the thing that I think frustrates me the most is, yeah, I know things were said in the past, whatever one. And I'm going to say right now, the things that were said in the past, they probably should have been said, whatever. But that was also a different time back then. It's not the same era that we live in nowadays. You say Barstool does this, Barstool does that. Barstool has raised over $30 million for small businesses. I don't know if they know that, but that's a lot more than they've raised for small businesses. So if, if we're, if we're going tit for tat, like I, Barstool does do good in the world. They, they've raised money for cancer. They've raised money for uh, who's the guy who had the, the Lou disease, Garrick's disease. Yeah. with the, uh, with the bucket challenge or whatever, the ALS challenger. ALS. Like Barstool has done so much, for people, like so much. And you have somebody there who, who runs it, who's, who wants it, wants her own team, who wants, who wants women's hockey on TV, dude. And I would say the last time that you've heard about women's hockey uh, from a national standpoint, I would believe it would have been those Olympics when the U.S. was playing Canada, right? Up until then, like, there really hasn't been that much news. I woke up in the morning and Dave Portnoy put out a video talking about women's hockey, and I think it had around, like, a million views. And it was that morning where it had a million views. Let me guys ask you guys something. Do you think that – NWHL has ever had a million views in the history of the NWHL? Because the answer is no. Like, and it sucks that the first million view thing that they have is Portnoy going at them. 
But Portnoy, you're not just going to stand pat because they went after Eric Nardini. That's his boss. That's who he believes in. That's who has helped him grow the company that he has into the company it is now. And it was, dude, it was the most wild thing. Like we had something in Saratoga similar happen where one of the bar, one of the bar stool, like small business funds went to this, this pub called the parting glass, which is, we go to the parting glass on holidays. It's a great place to fucking play darts, drink Guinness and hang out. It's like a really cool Irish bar. Uh, great Rubens. And Barstool was going to give him money, and like this one just jerk from where we're from wrote the, wrote an article about I can't believe the party glass would accept this money from from uh, and Barstool was insane. Like, bro, you don't get it because th- this isn't your life. These people have worked their whole lives to have this company happen. How is this any different, dude? Like, like uh, women's hockey wants to be on the same level of men's hockey. Like, a lot of the women's hockey players have to work two jobs. Like, uh, like being a hockey player isn't their career. It, well, it is, but it, like they have to find other sources of income. This I mean, we had, would, we, would get them income. Ho- hopefully, that this would be that thing where they don't have to do anything else besides focus on playing hockey, right? How can you turn that down? It blows my mind. They just don't get it. And this is why the NWHL fails time and time and time again. Like, they had it there. They had it on a plate in front of them where they could just – they could get backing from Barstool who's doing a lot of really good shit in the world right now. And, yeah, like in the past, sure, like some some jokes or some lines have been like crossed over. But, like, the same people that are saying this, you're telling me these same people have been perfect throughout their entire course of life, that they haven't done something bad, that they haven't made fun of somebody, that they haven't done a joke in, in good conscience that went – I just hate the people that go at them because they, they must think that they're so perfect in their own minds, but nobody's fucking perfect. It blows my mind, dude. So th- that's all I'm going to talk about the NWHL. It fucking sucks. I hope Barstool starts their own league and I hope all the, the women go and they play and they make a career out of it. And, and Barstool will be like, Hey, do you guys remember the time that this could have been you? Well, tough shit. So that's kind of what I have on it. I mean, you, you summed it up really nicely and um, just going off of, of that i believe in you know people can make mistakes people can have a not so perfect task and they can do really good things and dave Bornoy is absolutely doing amazing things right now with the fund um and we've had casey bellamy on the podcast she's one of the best like top five women in the world right now at hockey and it's sad to hear her talk about how there's not funding for health insurance they have to carry their bags into the rink it's just Yes, that's I, a great I, point, dude. I that wanted to get point. to a level. Yeah. Because, dude, most Olympians aren't even playing in the NWHL. Mo- like, I would, I don't know the exact numbers, but I know a lot of the Olympians aren't even in that league because they don't have these things. How do you play but, hockey at that level and not not fund health insurance? But and not even that, but, like, now you have a potential deal where, like, these women can get paid. Maybe you have these Olympians. How do you know they were going to get paid? I, well, I mean, it's just – it's an assumption, dude. But if with Barstool – backing you with the amount of like things that you're going to see, whether it be like they have a broadcast on something where like, where they need awareness, dude. That's not making money because people don't know where to go watch an NWHL game. They don't even know an NWHL game's on. And now you have one of the most major sports platforms on planet earth saying, Hey, like we want to, team. we want to back women's hockey. We want to do these things. And then for them just to say no, and then, and then wonder why the game isn't going. It, hello, wake up. Yeah, I mean, the only counterpoints I have, uh, one, Eric Nardini's like like cocky for like a year and a half, and I actually cringe a lot when she talks about hockey, to be honest with you. Um, she's kind of a fucking hardo. Uh, number, number two, I think everyone kind of wins because I don't – the one thing I don't understand is like how would Barstool actually help the NWHL? Like I don't, I don't think apples to oranges that make sense for either – party really like how how are they going to promote it like do the do the audience match not really um and then the other thing the nwhl had over 1.27 or 1.2 million views on their twitch stream yesterday over 7 mi- million minutes streamed uh you, so you that's think that happens you think that happens without the barstool thing oh well, how many people that were how many people okay but it helped galvanize it because at the end of the day how many of those people do you think are the people that the majority of the people that are mad about this are probably my main point. The majority of people that are mad about this wouldn't have watched NWHL hockey in the first place. And I don't think those viewerships are different from what they have right now. Like I agree that maybe without that situation, they would not have gotten that many views, but they did. It seems like, 
I, it seems like if there's one thing maybe the NWHL can learn from this, it's that um, if you if you don't want to go that route and deal with people like that, that I mean, that's your choice. Um, but then your fans have to show out. And so far they have. So if they continue to show out, then that's good for them. And I mean, the deal's good too. They got to deal with whoever. So, I mean, at least there's some positives out of it, right? Like, I just don't think it really made sense for either party to begin with. I think it made sense for the party in terms of growing the game, getting the game out there, spreading their uh, a message that women's hockey should be on. I think that that would have happened. But at the same time, you're right. The, and the fans did show up or whatever. I doubt that that continues to happen. And I think that that happened because of this Barstool thing, because because they were in the news. because because But they were in the news because of Barstool. They weren't just in the news because they were in the news. And I think that's that's where they need to get if they want to be successful. They need to be in the news because they're the NWHL. They they like that's why they need to be in the news, not because Barstool's there. Yeah, but again, I just don't think that the people those numbers correlate to Barstool fans. Like that's their own fans, though. Like they grew the game in a very weird way, but I think they just grew the game. And it was with the help of Barstool, but like none of those people watching it were probably the majority, like there probably were some Barstool fans, but I don't think it was like such a heavy rush of them. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I doubt that there were even any Barstool fans just because they're go Presgo and they're supporting Ardini. I doubt that they would like, I mean, maybe. Right. but I just, I don't know, man. I just, it, it blows my mind. I think if you want to grow the game, you need to get the game out there right. and having a top sports platform being like, Hey, we could get your game out there. And you, you know what? You're right. I would say the majority of the demographic of people who follow Barstool will probably give two shits about women's hockey, but I bet that there are some people there that do care. And I bet there are some people there that would like to be able to watch women's hockey, not on Twitch or not on this. And I'm not saying Barstool could have done that for them, but I, I just don't understand. Like if you want something and it's there, but you won't do it because it's not your way. It just, I just thought it was hypocritical, and I I don't know. It's it's I in the. I get what you're saying. Cool, but I just I don't know, man. It it blew my mind. It it really and just everybody just everybody has an opinion, dude. And if it's not your opinion, you're wrong. And this and that and this and that. It's, like, it's exhausting. Well, here's hoping that Discover can uh you know the sponsorship oh, helps. <laughs> Reeling it back in, dude. I got to reel you guys in sometimes here. Um, moving on. <laughs> bro, I feel like half the time we're reeling really you back in, bro. I feel like we're reeling you in on your segues. Uh, all right. Well, you know, I'm hosting. Yeah, this. why don't you just keep your hand on your own fishing pole? We'll worry about us. We'll try to catch our own fish. You worry about yours. Yeah, you watch your bobber, bro. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great metaphor, Hal. Um, so the Rangers, Lafreniere's first goal. Ken, overtime, overtime game winner. What, what'd you think? Yeah, let me break down. I mean, that was cool. First, first NHL goal is off a pass from Colin uh, Blackwell. Who well, did we just play. leave? At, whoa, whoa! We just left NHL news. There's two topics there that I wanted to talk about really quick. So I'm going to cut Ken off from his beautiful moment. Number I mean, one, I wrote down. Whoa, 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 whoa! Well, let's not be blaming Ken about Rangers. Somebody else. We're not. Okay. Right. We're not, Mr. Reel It In over there. Mr. Reel It In went over NHL Network. I wrote this down. I want to talk about this really quick. I love having an NHL Network. I think I've given NHL Network a bad name in the past, but at the end of the day, from like 11 p.m. to 2 a.m., I just have it on on repeat uh, on the weekend. And it's the best. And last night they were showing uh, Winnipeg, Vancouver. That was fucking great to watch. I wouldn't have any other opportunity to do that. So I am now, I just want to make sure it's clear that I'm pro NHL Network. Does anyone have any responses? I feel like I've gotten more anti NHL network since they aired our stuff and haven't sent us the uh, video of it. But like, you're right. There's nothing better than just laying in bed and like, okay, what? And like, dude, it's sports center, but it's hockey. It's the fucking best dude. It's the best. And like you said at night, you could turn on NHL network at any time during the day. And there's something hockey related being played. Which- Are you an EJ Heratic fan though? That one show that they have, do you watch that? Is I don't mind EJ Heratic. Yeah. Not- yeah, I do. I actually kind of like DJ Raddick. I think he, uh, I think he's, he's very well spoken, and I, I he kind of reminds me of that like fun uncle. Maybe not like fun uncle, but like the uncle that knows a shit ton of stuff about hockey. Yeah, yeah, not like pounds beers in the garage, but like yeah. he will get drunk, but in a classy way. Yeah, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, dude, DJ Raddick definitely gets drunk in a classy way. Yeah, a couple of unless, rads. Unless he doesn't drink, and that's like noted. And if that's the case, we didn't. We're, we're trying to say he's cool. Yeah. Next, speaking <laughs> of a cool guy, I just thought I just thought this was 
I don't have much to say on it, but that McDavid goal is insane. I mean, I and the thing that I wanted to bring up with this is so he goes pretty much end to end, splits like four guys, and some fucking hardo. It had like so many responses, and like I think it had a lot of likes too. But he was like, like if hockey was played the right way, uh, someone would have laid him out on his ass. It's like, buddy, did you not see that one defenseman whiff? Like, in order to lay McDavid out, you have to catch him. That's why being fast is good. Like, it's not, you don't think everybody on Toronto wanted to get a fucking piece of them and strip them of the puck? They couldn't. They physically could not. And that's why Connor McDavid's so unbelievable. So, whoever said that, I can almost bet my life that that guy's never played hockey, mm-hmm. never played yeah. hockey before. And here's my reasoning because I had never played lacrosse before. And I did three games of lacrosse at Hudson Valley Community College and I needed a football. And I didn't play football either. It's my biggest regret. So, I never played like on land sports where you could hit somebody. And I always thought it was so easy to, to just fucking blow somebody up. I always thought it was the easiest thing in the world. I remember our first drill where it was like a one-on-one where like I went out of my way and I tried to fucking destroy somebody and I missed him by like 10 yards. Like it, I was nowhere near the vicinity. So like thinking that that is a simple thing to, to think that lining up Connor McDavid going full speed down the ice and thinking that you can hit him is absurd. And if you like NHL players can't do it, dude. So why do you think you can yeah, dude, like, and that's my, like, in beer, like, if I was playing, like, not beer league, but contact hockey, and I, like, whiffed at a guy center ice, and he went down, like, that's the most degrading shit that could happen to you on the defensive side of the puck, and you don't stand a fucking chance, like, your best prayer is, like, maybe to get, like, some contact with him, like, somehow, like, get the stick, just get that puck off his stick, but, like, you're not gonna lay him out when he's going full speed, bro. Bro, did you see the uh, commercial that they have on right now? It's Connor McDavid. I don't know what the commercial. It's it's just like a hockey commercial. Like watch hockey, and it's Connor McDavid going on a rush against the Canucks and him splitting the D and going in and scoring. Have you seen that? Yeah, I think so. At the end, so he he ends up like having like a really short breakaway because so he splits the D. But Quinn Hughes hits the puck away from him, and he still fucking goes shelf. I don't think people. If you get a chance and you see that commercial, at the end of it, watch watch him because I think. You think that he just has the puck on his stick the whole time, but at the end, Quinn Hughes hits the puck away from him, and he's so fast, he's already going that way. It was, and to have like the wherewithal just to get it and shoot it immediately, just such an underrated part of that play. So check it out. But now, can I talk about the Rangers? Yeah, go ahead, dude. All right, Lexi Lafreniere, Lafreniere. We still don't know it yet. Uh, scores his first goal um, in overtime against the. Um, who was it? Who the fuck was it against? Oh, Buffalo, thank you. Um, off a pass from Colin Blackwell. It was nice to see. I mean, dude, there are actually a couple of th- things on this. Lafer- he's had his chances. He probably should have like five goals by now. There's been a lot of like pucks in front of the net that he's put on the net that he didn't elevate or he met. Like he's, he's putting himself in the position to score, which makes me feel good. Second thing, I thought this was really funny. There's a reporter for Buffalo who before overtime went out and pretty much said Lafreniere was a bust. You didn't notice him anywhere like the Rangers missed on this kid. And then of course he goes scores an overtime goal. So that guy nailed it. Um, they just played the Penguins last night. They just beat the Sabres. They've been kind of doing oh. this. What's up? Are you, are you still talking about Lafreniere? No, I was moving on, but you can, can, I, can I just wanted to ask you two things on him. So one um, to me, I've only seen highlights of him, but when I see highlights of him. He looks like an NHL player. What would you like through his first, however many games, if you could give him like a grade, a letter grade. Oh man. Um, C plus. Yeah, that's fair, and I don't think if that's like a, a 18, 19 year old rookie, that's cool. Also, I thought it was funny you didn't mention the part, dude. It's pretty special when you share a uh, a record with Cody Cece as the only teenager to score an overtime goal. That's a pretty big name. Yeah, I didn't bring that up on purpose, dude. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, but go so, ahead. No, so they they beat the Sabers, and they had been they've been doing this thing where they played well, and then the third period goes, and they either shit the bed or it just bounces and it go their way. So they're losing a ton of games. They finally get a win against the Sabres, their second win of the year, probably one of their more complete wins that they've played. And David Quinn switches goalies and goes with Georgia last night. I don't understand that. Like, how? Did, like you finally win a game, you finally – like, what's going through your head to switch your goalie when you finally won one and things are starting to – that didn't make any sense to me. Uh, he's playing Colin Blackwell a lot. He was on the taxi squad. He's a smaller forward. He's got some jam to his game, dude. He can skate. I've liked what I've seen from him, but at the same time, I've seen it so many times where the Rangers have this one guy and he comes in for like three weeks and then he gets hurt and then you never hear from him again. Well, doesn't Blackwell get hurt last night? So uh, maybe we'll see him back. Who knows? Keandre Miller, dude, is so fucking good, dude. 
he he just uh his reach is insane like people think they get around him and like he instead of him going full tilt all the time like he he knows exactly how far he needs to go before he can use that poke so he's been really good adam fox is going to be an absolute stud in this league for however many years we tapped on tony d'angelo it's just been kind of a really frustrating beginning of the season i thought things were going to be different they're not I don't know what to believe in the coach. I, I just – there's a lot of question marks going in. I can't wait to hear what happened with Tony D'Angelo. But uh, as of right now, I, I don't know. And a lot of people are saying, comparing this team to last year when they didn't do that great, but they're like, yeah, but we're still playing games, whatever. It's a short season. You need to win. There's only so many times you can say, hey, at least we played a good game without winning before that fucking excuse is enough. So um, that's what I have on the Rangers, dude. If the Rangers season just goes completely – to shit like this all year what what do you think happens with quinn one more year i don't know i guess it depends on how much how bad the shit goes like does lafreniere like he was brought to develop young kids like the younger players and if you look like philip Hedl had a pretty good start to the year before he got hurt but like capo caco played 10 minutes the other night and then they asked quinn about it and he said oh that wasn't on purpose it just got lost in the shuffle it's like dude if you're supposed to be trying to help these kids like develop maybe you play your number two overall pick more than 10 minutes a night yeah and it's kind of a, it's kind of uh tough to hear your coach say that the number two overall pick got lost in the shuffle uh, like what <laughs> yeah bro but, uh, i'm playing fucking hearts positive, with your grandma i'm positive though uh a player that i i'll be honest with you i didn't believe that much in who's been our best player this year, Pavel Buchnevich, has been unbelievable. They're using him on the PK. He's really strong on the puck. He's one of the first people to jump in if there's a scrum. He's physically engaged every single game, and, like, dude, he's getting his opportunities too. Mika Zibanejad looks like he's lost a step. I know he had COVID uh, coming into camp, and then he got kind of banged up against, I think, the Devils. I don't know if he's playing 100%, and the reason why I say that is they keep putting Panarin in the one-timer slot as a right-handed shot on the power play, and he just keeps blasting shots from, like, outer space that go nowhere near the net, where last year that was Mika's spot, and he was ripping twine. So it makes me think maybe there's something going on with Mika. They have him in that bumper position right now where they're kind of giving him, like, a quick one-touch pass with, like, a shot in the middle slot. It's happened a couple times. He hasn't buried on it. They had Chris Kreider on the third line. He's just being Chris Kreider, uh, but – yeah, I don't know. A very underwhelming thing, and it's just frustrating because everybody keeps telling me they're playing good, but like they're not winning. So it's uh, what's the point? Yeah, fair enough, dude. Uh, I'll keep my brewing shit quick. Uh, Craig Smith talked about him. Our only real big free agent acquisition. He loves to shoot the puck. I don't have a ton to talk about with him other than last last time I was on the pod, I told you I thought he looked great in hockey equipment. And this week, I would like to update you guys and let you know that he loves pucks on net. Um, and I love it, dude. Like, just when in doubt, throw it on net. I love the fucking chaos that it creates. Uh, second thing, really quick, Nick Ritchie. I don't know. Am I a member of the Nick Ritchie fan club now? I might be. Eight games, four goals, three assists, seven points. All Nick Ritchie has been doing is producing. Does he look terrible out there? Is it kind of confusing at times? Um, sometimes it looks like he's just, like, standing in quicksand. Other times he's running guys 10 seconds behind the play, but he's producing. So, like, I don't give a shit. Like, right now, Nick Ritchie's on my good side. He's one of the few role players for the Bruins that's been putting up consistent points. So, Isn't it always yeah. kind of fun to have, like, a wild card on your team? Yeah. That's <laughs> what he is, dude. And, it's like, you, <laughs> once you come to terms with the fact that, like, he's never just going to be sick every game of the year. Like, kind of, like, know how, like, uh, in our in our blogger group chat, Waylon told somebody, like, like, that's Kevin Hayes. Like, our Flyers guy was complaining about Kevin Hayes, and Waylon was like, as watching him with the Rangers, that's like, that's Kevin Hayes. He frustrates you sometimes, and other days he looks so dominant. Like, when you can get to the point where you come to terms with they're just a fucking wild card, and you embrace it, and you hope they show up that night, it's like, it's easier to hate them. It's like, I look at it as they're a shitty player who plays good some nights, as opposed to a good player who's not reaching their potential. I actually think I have the correct word. I just want to make sure. Yes, an enigma. Uh, the Giants used to call <laughs> Ruben Randall an enigma. <laughs> Ruben Randall. I think that's oh. what the wide receiver was. They had a receiver that would like have a sick game, and then he would go. You would have no idea that he was on the team for the next ten weeks. It's it's kind of like that, and that is a person or thing that is mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. It's a you strong know, word, dude. This has literally nothing to do with anything, but I just wanted to give a shout out. My favorite New York Giant of all time was Ron Dane. Oh, big big running back, right? Yeah, Lightning and Thunder with Barber, like, way back in the day. I don't know. I don't even 
I know no. we're on Giants talk and whatever. I just want to bring this up really quick. I'm not like a huge football fan. I'm a Giants fan or whatever. But the one player that I wish I used to – that my dad, the reason why he was a Giants fan, Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor. Taylor. Dude, have you ever watched that guy's highlights, man? Holy you ever watched like his documentaries, though? I need to because like he just seems like he was just a – could you imagine if he was playing football in 2021? He wouldn't be playing football in 2021. <laughs> no. <laughs> that wouldn't be happening. Uh Last thing really quick, I just wanted to shout out the boys. So we didn't – I got married. I said I wouldn't talk a lot about it, but we didn't have a, a registry. We just like – because I ended up eloping, so we didn't have a registry. So they, they bought me a nice Ray Bork signed jersey framed. Um, I love it. Uh, it's a beautiful jersey. So I just wanted to, one, shout out the boys for that. Uh, two, it's kind of funny because when Ked got me this jersey, it was basically him saying Ray Bork is the real 77 mm-hmm. before D'Angelo got waved. I didn't, uh, even, I know, I didn't even know. I know three, like what, what's, where does this go? Like, what do you think like the move is for that? Because like, I don't, it's not like you Ked, where Ked, you could just put that butt, like puppy on your wall and no one would say anything. Like, I don't have that luxury. Like, just I, think put it in my room. I think you do. You just, because right on the signed jersey, it says hall of fame. <laughs> yeah. It's history. You know? It's an, it's not like it's a, a schmuck. Like, uh, and I'm glad you, I'm glad you liked it. We, we were kind of bouncing some ideas around and, uh, it just seemed right, dude. Right, you never really wanted a Jersey before. I know it's one that you're not going to put on or whatever, but uh, <laughs> I hope it's like a precedent established with the boys moving forward that instead of like a joint wedding gift, we all just get each other like what we would want. So, uh, Shout out, shout out to us and, and our heads. And I think you just hang that up on the wall, dude. Like you have to. I put it. It's right not an easy. It's not an easy hang though. I gotta. It's one of those things I gotta like get like a leveler. You know, like one of those levelers. Like if I do it, I have to do it right. It's gonna have to. It's gonna need Hell yeah. This just isn't a little nail, a little tap, 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 a roo. So I put it right in the fucking it. kitchen, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like uh, we were talking uh, with one of our buddies like a week ago about how it would be nice like every day you walk down the stairs and you slap one of those like Notre Dame signs, yeah. um, just like tap it on the way out the door. Dude, I remember like my old man was still around. We would just keep collecting ranger shit. We would just keep hanging it in the living room, and it got to a point where like the like the fucking left side of our living room was all ranger shit and like a log <laughs> cabin with like bears and like mooses and shit. And I remember my mom would get so mad, but like, dude. Tough shit. Yeah, tough shit. <laughs> That's all I got on Bruins, Dale. Nice, dude. Well, I'm glad you like your gift. We all had fun uh, choosing it for you. Oh, boy. And, um, so moving on from that, we've got our beer league roundup. Do we have a uh, – nope, we don't have a uh, little segue for that. But, yeah, Jimmy and I, we played – we've been we've been kind of on a tear. We played Friday night in beer league. And then we played yesterday outdoors in the backyard rink. Uh, guy Christian out in Northville. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but first, I want to touch on Friday night. Jimmy did pull his groin. Um, he beat me to Oh, a- come I- on. Bad, bad. Like, really bad. So, so, I'm, so I'm bringing up the, the pulled groin because it happened 10 seconds after he beat me to a loose puck. Me and him had this epic battle that sent him pretty much on a breakaway. Um, you got a Bambi's groin. It's bad, dude. It's fucking real bad. You know what I mean? Like, how long you had groin issues, bro? Yeah. Props, uh, props, props to Ked. Uh, that was uh, hard to see that after you after you won the loose puck battle. But anyway, yeah, yesterday, you, me, Jimmy, Mary, Dan, Brad, Rack, TJ was there. It was a good, good group, good guys. On one of the once of once in a lifetime opportunity, kind of one of those things that. I didn't even know really existed. This guy had a used Zamboni from an old high school that he bought. He had the Salmon River. He bought it from Salmon River High School. Which is an unbelievable high school hockey team. Like small town fucking barn. I I knew you'd appreciate that. Yes. And and the name Salmon. Like, I'm sorry to cut you off, Dale, but just just think like central. Close your eyes, listeners. Think of like central New York. And it's just the boys playing hockey for fucking Salmon River. Like, that's. I don't know. I just go on. I just love that Bro, idea. He was telling us a story about like how he got the Zamboni and it was like this long thing and they were doing some bartering with the school system. And then he finally gets it. He puts it on a, the, uh, his trailer as a construction company. And he's driving it back and they get back to his house and they look and they're like, where'd the hood go? And the, the fucking hood must have flown off on fucking 87. On the way back. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking terrifying. 
Um, yeah, that's yeah. sick. I mean, uh, I saw pictures of the rink you guys skated at. Um, Whenever you yeah. see come home during the winter, so you can get a skate in there. The people there are so nice, and you you we can play at night. Like he has like light set up. He has like a little warming hut where you can go and like get warm and like. There were a lot of CBA kids there and like their parents and like the one hockey mom was like running the running the sheet and like she was a legend. Like it, it, she was doing the time the timekeepers and be like, Hey, what's the time? She's like, She's got a you got a minute left. And it just <laughs> she was unbelievable. And it, it was just a really, really, really cool atmosphere. You pull into his driveway, dude, and like you know power lines when you like throw like shoes over, it's supposed to be like for drug dealers or whatever. He had like his own line. It wasn't a power line, but he had like an own line over his driveway when he pulled in and there were like probably 10 hockey skates dangling from it. <laughs> so, I mean, he pretty much looked into every single detail possible. Yeah, dude, he, he runs a, a, a tight ship there, dude. It's really nice. He had a, he had a frozen pathway that went from a, like a warming hut extension of his garage that had rubber mats down um, that like you could skate from inside his house to the, to the rink. And the boards were from the Glens Falls Civic Center. They are the old Adirondack Red Wing boards, which is just another wild story so we got to get them on at some point the ice was so nice too like it was like it it reminded me of when i grew up playing at current where you had like the boards around you and the ice was wasn't too like like it was it was really really cool yeah we'll have to get christian on and tell us the whole story of how that happened because that was just an amazing amazing spot uh uh, story here really quick though i I just wanted to point this out there boys i uh it felt like a missed shot that we didn't tell Ked to uh, rub a little can I brands on his groin. See how that feels, huh? Maybe mix in the sponsor, rub it on your groin. I just throwing it out there, dude. Let us know. Dude, next I, podcast. I, I have been. This is like a bad one where it's. I think it's going to take me a couple weeks before I'm back on skates, which is unfortunate. But sorry, dude. go yeah. ahead, Dale. Yeah, I was just saying. Moving on, the, the next topic, uh, Jimmy. Got, Jimmy put in here. I don't know much much about it. Um, just a beer league story. I was going to see if you yeah, guys have any, any situation in your life that happened. I put something up in the Reddit, and this is what one of the guys said. I was playing in a low-level beer league, and none of us were great skaters on the team, but there was a particularly bad player. We had the puck in the other team's zone, and our D guy was literally 15, front of, 15 feet in front of our own net. Our goalie tells him to join the rush and skate up, and the D guy gets pissed and says, no, I'll play how I want. The goalie again is like, no, dude, like go join the rush or at least be at the top of our zone. The D, guy, the D guy gets in the goalie's face and yells, no, I'll fucking play the way, the way I want to play, and then proceeds to punch our goalie in the face. Confused, the refs throw him in the box for roughing, and we had to argue against it, saying you can't get a penalty for roughing your own guy. Has anything like that ever happened in, in any experience with you? Like, I've, I played in an open skate where I looked over and two guys were fighting on the bench. No, I mean, I I know I you've told me that story. I don't think I've ever had anything like that. I just think this sounds like a couple – like the guy who sucks at hockey kind of sounds like a douche, and the goalie was probably arguably a douche too. Like if the do- goalie said it in a nice way, because like if you suck and you come to beer league, I don't care. Like, but if like someone's like, can you just like skate up a little bit? Like maybe listen to him, like learn the game, right? Yeah, yeah no, I, I think you're right. It depends on the approach. If the goalie was like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? I can understand why somebody would get mad, but like <laughs> at the same time, like. What the fuck are you doing, dude? Like the puck's all the way down the other end. I'll do what I want. Do what I, 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 res- I respect that. Um, and then just one other thing. It's not really beer league, but this is uh, this is what Mark Stone has on his stick in terms of like the the knob end. Have you ever seen anything like that? No, I had when I was younger. I actually had a pretty big knob. I I transitioned from like huge knob guy to basically non-existent knob almost overnight um i think i think a knob serves a purpose that's kind of heavy like you got to think like those sticks are like so light and like so advanced now that like having that big of a knob like probably throws off like the whip or the torque but like what the fuck do i know compared to mark stone yeah that is true i just wanted to show it i thought i don't know and while we're on this topic i don't know what it's called but when you like fucking roll up the tape and then do that one little like cross zag up it and oh, then you tape yeah. over it. I don't know what that's about, but I was always a huge fan of that as well. I don't do it anymore simply because it takes too much time. But like when, like when you're on a hockey team growing up and like you take a bus to a game, you get there like two hours early. It's like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna fucking twist this tape up and fucking let it rip. Yeah, nothing like getting a new stick and taping it for the first time. Yeah, but then that first, the one thing is like I used to get nervous. Like first tape job, like it would go 
like I never usually got it in one bang. Like I'd always rethink it like three times. I always do it on my living room couch. Always. I, I have my bag. I have my wax, my tape, my scissors. And I just dial in, dude. And then you don't have to bring it into the locker room. That's what we had for beer league. I think we really only have one more pocket. So we have heroes and zeros or one more segment. Hell yeah. So uh, let's get into that. Hey fans, this is Dominic Moore. I'm just going to take you guys through a little bit of the behind the scenes behind stuff the here. Scenes stuff here. All right, Dom Moore. Thank you. Uh, heroes and zeros time. I really only have one hero right now. If I come up with something else while this is going, I'll let you know. But Seattle Kraken and ownership and staff committed a hundred grand to the University of Alaska Anchorage hockey program over the next two years. I love this shit. Uh, Gabby Gibson, she plays hockey. Uh, I think she's from Alaska, so I'm sure that probably hit home to her too. But shout out to this. They're not even a team yet, and they're already helping hockey grow. So. Uh, this is something that you know I like to see. What, do you guys have anything on this? Because I don't think Alaska Anchorage is like the. I mean, clearly it's not Minnesota or BU, but the fact that like they're trying to help out, I think that's cool. Yeah, I always thought it was cool. Like Maine always used used to non COVID would go to Alaska tournament every year to start the year. And that's yeah. always like a cool thing. Like you play college hockey, go over to Alaska. They always have good teams. Like they play. I don't know. I think Paranko went there. He might have gone to the other Alaska school, but. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Boosters, uh, Boosters alumni. I don't know if that's the situation here, but it feels like a booster move. If I was a billionaire, I'd be willing to give $100,000 out to college sports teams for no reason. Yeah, that's kind of a flex. Yeah, it's a huge flex. Um, I'll go next hero of the week, uh, Jimmy Howard. I, Jimmy Howard is an interesting enigma. He had some terrible numbers the last couple of years. Never really lived up to the hype in the NHL. Um but I just talked about UMaine. He's a UMaine hockey goalie, so I wanted to shout him out. Arguably the best, one of the best college hockey goalies ever. I think he had like a 954 save percentage one year. His goals against average was under two, and he did it while having uh, bleach blonde hair with uh, like gel tips and a puka shell necklace on. So uh, I was always a huge fan. Ogdensburg, New York, talking about another like upstate New York uh, kind of mecca for hockey where you got that big igloo up there. Talked about that rank on the pod before. So shout out Jimmy Howard. Jimmy Howard, in terms of goalies that are from New York, uh, most games played, most wins. Uh, I mean, yeah, Ogdensburg, New York, UMaine. He played – I mean, also, to his defense, the Red Wings didn't really ever have sick teams really in front of them. Like, um, when he got there, it was basically, like, right as all their good players were, like, retiring and getting old as fuck. You're right. Yeah. And then Detroit's been a joke. Yeah, and, dude, if you look at it, he went 246 and 196. This is the same guy. Oh, wait, maybe this is the wrong guy. No, this has to be him. Is he in 84? He's a couple of, Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So, um, pretty good career. He didn't get to the 250 or 300 mark, but still, for goalies out in New York, you have Jimmy Howard, Guy Hebert, uh, Mike Dunham, Robbie Ash, Keith Kincaid. Those are, those are like kind of the, the top, top guys, and then it kind of falls off from there. But, uh, yeah. I'll go, I'll go zero. Uh, I got two quick zeros. My first zero, and I know some nerd's going to be like, there's probably like a, you're an idiot for using Safari. Sometimes I use Safari on my MacBook. Fucking sue me. When I type, I, yeah. That's bananas. I, I'm doing this on Chrome. The majority of the time I use Chrome, but I have Safari too. And every now and then I have two different browsers up, whatever. When I like, when I type something in the search bar on Safari, it goes to Google. But if you type in an NHL hockey player's name on Safari, it brings you to their Yahoo player profile. It's like, in what world, Safari, do you think any hockey fan wants to get their information on a player from fucking Yahoo? Uh, so that pissed me off. I just wish it went to Google. That's one. Number two, uh, car dealership employees. They're my zero of the week. I, if you do it for a living, I don't actually hate you. I just, I bought a car. Uh, over the weekend, and it, it just one of those situations, and we'll get into it because, Ket, I forgot you sold cars uh, for like a year or two. You get through everything. I made the deal. Everything was good, and then you have to talk to the finance manager, and he wasted 30 minutes of my time trying to make me buy more shit, and I like it was just like, no, and then he's like, let me go talk to my manager. It's like, dude, I don't really care. Like Whatever you say, when you come back, I'm not going to accept. Goes back to the manager. Well, I can get you this deal. It's like, no. He's like, all right, well, let me go back. It's like, stop. So my one question for you, Ked, uh, when people at car dealerships say they're going to ask their manager, are they actually asking their manager or are they just standing in another room for a minute and then coming back out? That's essentially what happens. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what happens. Um, it's like, and I get it, dude. Like, you guys have to sell shit, 
But it's like, I'm like being upfront with you that I don't want any of it. And you're just wasting my time. I have an update, by the way. I'm sorry that this is a little bit off kilter, but three sources <laughs> confirmed to the athletic that there was indeed an altercation involving D'Angelo and goalie Alexander Georgiev in the tunnel that leads to the Rangers locker room. Incidentally, Georgiev was held out of practice for maintenance on Sunday. The altercation was quickly broken up. So he tried fighting the goalie. Well, there you go. So and that's not gonna help that's not gonna help his NHL dreams either, too. <laughs> It's like it's like I wrote a playbook for Tony D, like how to make it through the season and continue to put up points, not fight the goalie. Probably would have made top ten. Yeah, I will say this though: Brendan Smith did fight Vinny Letary when he got cut and went to the Wolfpack, and Brendan Smith's on the Rangers now, so his career so, might not be over, and the '77 might still be around. I'm just, but there's uh, to me, there's a huge difference between Smitty mixing it up with Letary in fucking Hartford, Connecticut, at a fucking Whalers practice. And D'Angelo beating up the goalie after he just blew the game against the Penguins in the fucking tunnel, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Now that you put it that way, I think you might be right. There needs to be footage. I do They always have footage of where they walk through the tunnels. I know they fucking confiscated that shit, but, like, what did Smitty do? Like, what were the reactions? Broke like, it up. like, yeah. I don't know, because that's the thing, too, is it's like, so Georgia have just blew it, and, like, I told you we kind of talked about this before the podcast because it was one of the rumors, and I was like, to me, and I don't know if this is wrong, I just tried to never blame the goalie growing up. Like, sometimes it was blatantly obvious, but you, if you played for a kid, like, Georgia has been pretty good for you guys. Like, like if he fucks up royally in overtime, like, I give him a pass. Like, if that's my D partner, I might be like, hey, dude, like, figure it the fuck out. But, like, the goalie always gets the pass. And, like, as, like, a someone on a team, you're like, trained to protect your goalie but then like it's your own buddy it's fucking tony d off the rails fighting your goalie like what the fuck do you do i don't know man and i know exactly i i wonder if he was on the ice glad have been on the ice when it happened because like the penguins had the puck for three minutes and they had an opportunity to get rid of it and georgiev just like literally gave them the puck back so i can understand i can understand somebody being pissed maybe he said something georgiev said something back and then anthony d'angelo was like okay we're (laughs) we're in one I don't know, but that's the update. Let's go back to this car dealership thing because I'm kind of uh, I'm a little bit hurt that you didn't ask me about it, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, so I didn't really think about it. I did no, my own lease research. Or purchase. Lease or purchase? Purchase. Okay. All right. And you did had my lease, right? I I bid every single dealership in the state against each other. Went with the lowest one. So I did my thing, and like, no offense to you, bro, but like, I put your phase of selling cars kind of in the same boat as like when you pretended to be like a ref, like a hockey ref, like short lived, your heart was never really in it. Um, I would think you would agree with me that your heart was never really in it. Like, do do you disagree? Did you live it? it? My heart was never in that, but I definitely, I've learned the insides and the outs of like selling cars and it's, it's like they, their jobs to fuck you. Right. And that's why, like, I don't let them do anything. That's like how I feel. I just go into it knowing they're going to fuck me somehow. And like, my opinion um, is that no matter what you do, you're getting fucked somehow when you buy a car. Um, So I just try to keep the fucking to a minimum and find the lowest price possible. Yeah, That's it. That's all I do. (laughs) When you so if you get so as a salesman. Uh, this is probably people are like, why the fuck are they talking about this? Say, say you're like emailing somebody, right? And like you offer them something and they come in. Will you go lower than that? Like, do you have, do you have like a number in your head? You won't go higher than like, do you know what I mean? Ask me how many times I send an email when I was selling cars. Right. So like, again, dude, like, I'm sorry. I didn't think of you as the King expert. I literally forgot that you sold cars. If I had remembered, I would have called you. They they had, they have somebody else dealing with like the online leads and stuff like that. Fair enough. You were, you were person to person. Yeah, dude. And they wanted, they wanted me to stand outside in the parking (laughs) lot, 95 degree heat and wait for somebody to pull in and run right up to the car and ask them how I could help them. No, dude, I'll sit inside with the AC and a Sudoku. And if they want to fucking hang out, I'm right here. I can get you a cookie. I feel like you used to write a lot of blogs when you worked there because you were just like chilling. (laughs) I mean, yeah, but also let's not forget that my first month of selling cars, I sold 13. They called me the rookie of the year. I was third on the board. <laughs> you never told me that, dude. That's huge. Congratulations. So 
I mean, shout out to car salesman. You're just doing your job, but I just want you to let you know, like, you're not fucking fooling me. Okay? <laughs> yeah, dude. Mor moral of the story: keep the fucking to a minimum if you're going to buy a car. So that was beautiful, boys. Um, my <laughs> my my hero of the week goes out uh, to uh, our pal Ryan Woody, who connected us with Buzz Schneider. He Ryan works for Northway Brewing Company. And they are putting together a miracle on ice golden ale. I'm gonna pull up a couple of these uh, these videos. All the proceeds or a portion of these proceeds go towards uh, the Miracle on Ice Foundation, which is incredible. Uh, so we're pumped. Again, we just had Bud Schneider on this morning. Uh, that podcast will be coming out soon. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Even if those so those beers look sick, and I like craft beers. Not snob like a snob about it but i'm just throwing it out there if you don't drink beer um or maybe like you're like one of those guys who's like i strictly drink bud heavies or something like that uh and you don't go out there i still think that's a great beer just on the fucking can alone to just have somewhere and keep sick looking beer and yeah. it goes to, to something yeah, so i'm i'm so i was so fired up about the buzz schneider podcast and again i haven't drank beer in almost three years now i've been sober but if Buzz Schneider is actually going to stop in Saratoga on his way to Lake Placid and he really wants to hang out with Ked and I, I might have one of these beers, dude. Like, I feel like that's my last, my last beer was in Gretzky's, Wayne Gretzky's uh, restaurant in Toronto three years ago. But if there's any time to, to have one more beer, I feel like with Buzz Schneider would, would fucking be it. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to support or not support that. I will say that if the last beer you ever drank was with a member of a 1980 Olympic gold medal hockey team, that's kind of a flex. Yeah, dude, just one, you know, Bush Schneider. Bush Schneider offers me one of his beers. I'm probably going to drink it. I don't know if I support this cause, but I will say it's a great idea, Dale. But I don't. But it does not have my stamp of approval. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right. It's it's officially on record. Um, my my zero of the week goes out uh, to uh, the Instagram bully. I'm not gonna not gonna say any names, but bro, what happened with that man? Is that what? why our video got taken down? Because Instagram like took down one of our videos for harassment and bullying, and it was a video of like these two yeah. kids in practice and grade. So then I re-reported to Instagram. I said, no, it's not. And then yeah. Instagram put it back up. Is that the same video? Yes. So essentially the video was posted. It was a kid blatantly cross-checking his teammate in practice. Um, pretty, Full moon. Pretty good video. Like, the video itself got like 20,000 views on our Instagram. Um, but one kid one kid said it wasn't a cross-check. And then this other kid just started berating him with comments saying like, no, you're an idiot. No, like you can't even see it. And then so much so that the one kid DM'd us and was like, can you just delete my comment i don't want to deal with this uh, i was like yeah bro of course kids being an absolute douchebag so moral of the story don't be a bully on our account you're gonna end up as a zero of the week and our, our page is for for fucking cool hockey stuff and cool stories like we don't have Wait, so who was the bully like this 12 year old 14 year old kid on the ice you're saying you know no, you're in comments. i'm so confused yeah i mean I am too, man. I, essentially, I think what happens we 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 posted a video and people got into argument in the comment section. If it was a penalty or not? <laughs> and it almost got and it almost got taken down because I think somebody reported for it. Bro, save bro, that shit for Twitter. If you're gonna bully somebody in a comment section on Instagram, you're a loser, an absolute loser. And also, don't be reporting our shit for bullying, dude. Clearly, we don't like bullies. Why don't you just message us and we'll take it down, which is what I think you think you did. But, like, I just don't have time for that, guys. I just don't. So just stop reporting, okay? <laughs> oh, all Jeez. right. Yeah. Do you guys have – Ted, did you say you're zero? I don't know if I – I mean, the groin pull is bad. This Tony D'Angelo thing's worse. Um, <laughs> I guess my zero I, – I, I don't really have one. I, I, I'm really busy, but I don't know if that's a zero because I'm just getting a ton of shit done. But uh, shout out to all of our bloggers. I think we just had the best month we've had in a year with our, with our website, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I got. We're definitely looking for bloggers of different teams. Um, I mean, I, I mean, there's a ton of dude, like the Coyotes, uh, the Panthers, the Lightning, the Sabers, 
the Kings. Like we have tons of like teams if you guys want to write about. It. So just let us know. Right on. All right, and wrapping up with our uh, biz dev stuff. Again, we got Buzz Schneider coming on, um, interviewing JT Barnett of Triple Deep this week, along with Timmy King Jr. This one's also going to be pretty interesting. This kid snuck into the Stanley Cup celebration back-to-back -back years. He was on the ice for the Blues. Tarasenko handed him the cup on the ice, and then he somehow made his way to the uh, Tampa Bay Parade to lift the cup two years in a row. So that one should be interesting. Um, and then quick shout out to Blade Tech. We're going to have them on uh, pretty soon as well. Oh, yeah, definitely shout out to Blade Tech. Those blades were sick. I can't wait to have that on. That would be pretty cool. And then just one last thing again, if you guys do CBD, check it out. EMF25, canibrands.com. Boom, there's the video. There's the uh, the old image there. So uh, stuff works. Oh, wow, and the banner. Thank you, Dale. But that's what I have. You guys have anything else? That's it. All right, that's this week's podcast. Oh! All right, we're out.